fantasy is the drug of choice and it takes many forms. I know that this is a shocking statement, but since fantasy exists in many of our business ideas, entertainment, social media, our looks, how we handle relationships, and guess what? Our relationship with God. Yes, even our relationship with God could be a fantasy because not all of us know how to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you, O oh God, because there are so many things that we don't understand hinder our walk with you. But Lord, it's all in your word, and so we go back to your word to understand these deep and hidden things that you are exposing to us, Father, and they are no longer going to be hidden. Father, I pray for each one that has come to this session. Father, I pray for perseverance because so many start off and then they change their minds. Father, may each one understand, Father, how important it is for us to be worshippers of you in spirit and in truth. And to be worshippers sp in spirit and truth, we must not operate in fantasy nor demonic imagination. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Welcome everyone, and um, I am grateful to see you all here. And what I want to say to you is, this is not a topic that you just listen, go about your business and come back next two weeks, because it's every other week. You need to go back and listen. You need to apply, because there are some things that are affecting you in your work with the Lord that are not obvious. And how we respond to life is one of the ways that will affect us in our response to God. You know the word says, you know, you cannot love God who is a spirit and not love your fellow man. So if you love God who is a spirit, you got to love your fellow man. If you want to worship God in spirit and truth, then you must relate to your life on this earth and the people you interact with as reality, truth. So if we've learned fantasy in our everyday life, chances are it has overflowed into our relationship with God. And what we think is reality between us and God may actually be fantasy. And if you find yourself kind of wondering what you are hearing today, this is why we have sessions like this. I want you to understand and I will go into this a little deeper. And I want to encourage you, please, to type your questions out. Otherwise, you can put your hand up and I'll ask you to ask your question. We need your questions. And we also need, after the session, even if you don't want to do it publicly, type me comments as to whether this was helpful, if it wasn't. Because what we need are comments from you that will help others to be interested in joining us. Okay, so I want you to know that once you constantly operate in the world of fantasy, pretense, avoidance, denial, escapism, zoning out so we don't have to cope with what's in front of us, this world of fantasy will never allow us to enjoy the good and the beauty that's present in our reality. Because the grass will always seem greener on the other side. If only I could do X, Y, and Z, life will be better for me. So fantasy, whether you have been able to come to this conclusion or not, I want you to know, robs you of the beautiful mundaneness called life. It is in the mundaneness of life that there is a beauty and a strength that takes a while for us to actually begin to discern. The, the, the hardening to difficulty cannot take place in a world where everything is perfect. 
So if you've been, for example, without a job for a while, or you've been um, in a relationship that's been difficult, it is in the working out of the relationship, it is in the enduring, applying what the word says in your life while you're waiting for this job, that really strengthens you and sharpens you and shapes you rather than a life where you've never had to struggle before. But Satan fools us to think that the best thing is when there's nothing to challenge us. Life is just wonderful all the time. In other words, if you never use the weights to develop muscles and there's pain when those muscles are developing, the muscles will never develop. The muscles don't develop when you just say, okay, I want to have toned muscles. Those muscles to be toned comes from a lot of repetition in terms of exercise, pain associated with exercise. And I want you to know that the reality of life can be painful. But God calls us to operate in truth. And these are the things that he will use to make us into the people who he sees through his eyes. So I want you to understand that the instant appeal of fantasy will not allow for perseverance and endurance that comes in a world where God transforms. You try raising a child, giving them everything they ask for, and they never have to wait for it. Or they never understand being disciplined. Because whatever they do, no matter what they do, they get a sweetie, they get a whatever they get. They, they never have to struggle. If you look at a caterpillar and you want to help it, you will kill it. That butterfly will never come forth. It is in the struggle to come out that the, the, the larva and the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Otherwise, it's dead. I want you to understand that there is a reason why we are called to face life in reality and not fantasy. And so, fantasy does not need a savior. I've said this before. It's perfect. You don't need a savior if you're in fantasy. All the food you want, all the great friends, everybody like you, you're looking good all the time. You don't need a savior. Here's what. Because fantasy is perfect in every aspect, you don't need a savior where fantasy is concerned, but reality needs a savior because it's hard. And fantasy keeps us trapped. You know why? Because outside of fantasy, nothing is appealing. I want you to understand. Is this making sense to somebody? Because if it is, then you can type it, you can comment. I just want to know because, why? Because this is about you. The session is for you. And of course, those who come up after, they can listen. So, I want you to understand why fantasy is so appealing. Because to overcome something and to confront it, you've got to understand why you need to overcome it. Otherwise, it will just be somebody telling you something and you saying, okay. But not understanding why the root of fantasy in your life is destroying your ability to cope with reality in this life. So nothing is beautiful or so beautiful or so continually fresh, etc. So full of sweetness and perpetual ecstasy as what God says is good. And of course, if there are deserts, I mean, you must know what a desert is. There's nothing growing. Just think of your backyard if you never looked after it. It's dreary. You could see that as what evil is. But you see, once fantasy comes in to your mind and your life, it's the other way around. Because what happens is, what is good becomes boring. And the way evil is presented in this world, fantasy is its friend. And it comes across as intriguing, as attractive, 
as full of charm because this is what Satan wants you to feel about those things that are not good for you. So fantasy quotes evil. And that's how evil becomes appealing. But once you get a taste like Eve did of that forbidden fruit, everything else seems dreary and monotonous. This is how fantasy clouds our spiritual vision. And so I want us to understand that we can become very easily seduced into trading that which God has given us, exchanging it for charming fantasies that rob us of joy and leave us spiritually barren. And an example that comes to me is, is, is those couples who are married and after seven years or so, one of them sees somebody that looks more enticing than their spouse and begins to fantasize about what life would be like with that person. So even though God has given you something good, within the goodness, there's difficulty. Difficulty doesn't make it bad. But the fantasy of how it could be without any difficulty, just wonderful, is what begins to cause us to look at what God gave us as good and it becomes boring because everything else is exciting. And there are other examples. So anyone, first of all, who knows how Jesus operates will know that he has come to set us free from fantasies enchantment and there's a lot of it around and it has come into the church of Jesus Christ and it has seduced us into only wanting what is presented as things that make us feel good we don't want to hear about the challenges of the narrow road we only want to hear about the goodness of God and his blessings that we associate with a road that's not hard. So when you come to the narrow path, you don't want to stay there. And we become seduced in ways that we call good evil and evil good. So anyone who has been addicted to drugs would have been exposed to the world of fantasy. And I want to say to some of you who have had that experience or known others who have, you need to submit yourself to a season of deliverance because while you may tell yourself, I'm not going back to the drug, there's something worse that the devil wants you to do. You're not necessarily going to go back to the drug. But what happens is, you become, you could become a primary target for the enemy to deceive you because the drugs that have come into your, have affected your mind, and I'm speaking here not just physically but spiritually, have caused you to view life. But you, 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 you enter into a world of fantasy. That's the effects of a lot of those drugs. But what you don't understand is that even while you may say, I no longer want that drug, remember, under the influence of the drug, you call good evil and evil good because things that you would do, you would never do now. And at the time, you thought it was good. So what is good for you at that time? And what is good now is two different things. But the goodness that God has given you now that you are no longer in the drugs has displaced the effects of fantasy in your everyday world. Follow me. In your everyday world, you're no longer seeking to use the drugs to go into the world of fantasy. But you can still find yourself if you have not gotten some discipling and deliverance from the effects of some fantasy. Remember, when one takes a drug, one displaces one's discomfort with reality of life to go into a life 
into a realm where you're not facing the hardness of life. Okay, you're living in fantasy. You have learned to displace your everyday life and use a drug to produce fantasy to make the perfect life. You've learned how to displace. And I want you to know that that pattern of displacing may not have ended with a drug. You may stop the drug, but the pattern, the habit of displacing may continue, but in a different way. So sometimes people are set free from addiction to drugs and they're constantly having sex. And that's just at one level I'm talking about. However, I want you to know that the bottom line is you may watch something good and say it's not good. Because a lying fantasy is still operating in you. You've been doing it for so long. As somebody here in me today, because your discernment is still flawed until you are set free from lying fantasies that have been part of your life for a long time. For those of you that have not heard this before, we are body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit man is sealed when the Holy Spirit comes in and lives in you. But your mind, your will, your emotions, you need deliverance. And in your mind, lying fantasies could still exist even if you are not feeding it with the drugs. But your tendency to want to displace may still be there. And you can look at something good and feel that it's evil. And wisdom is in a multitude of counselors. Discipling and deliverance will set you free. But you cannot trust yourself. I don't trust myself. I trust Jesus Christ because he's still working in me with some things. So there are blind spots that we have. So I want you to know as I look at some of the comments here right now. Does this count for weed as well? I ask... Um, because nowadays society makes weed seem like a normal thing to use as though it's not a drug. Listen to me. The world will make anything look like it's normal. And weed will, it's fantasy. You take it to escape the reality. It makes you feel a certain way. So because it's become the norm doesn't mean it's right. And it has and does cause. I remember there is a, a, a professional, not in this church, Obviously, I see people outside of church, but from there, can't be, even begin to understand the start of their own professional career. <coughs> what has happened is, they've been on weed, high school years, and 40 years later, they're still on weed. And it is affecting them. It has affected them. It's affected them for a long time. And there are lots of ways it can affect, and I'm not going to go into it on this session, but I will tell you that just how you view life, any little bit of stress is the weed, and your thinking becomes flawed because your mind has been trained. It can't do without this thing. And in fact, you are not accustomed dealing with the stresses of life because you're so accustomed to using something to take the edge off of the hardness that you're facing. And they would have to want to give it up, but it's become their friend. They can't face life without it. How do you worship God in spirit and truth as a Christian when every other day you need a weed in order to cope? Do you understand Coming, bringing it back to God is going to affect your relationship with Jesus Christ and even your other relationships. I want you to know, I said this last week, sorry, week before, that those who get into pornography, any relationship, sexual relationship with their wife or husband will seem boring because what happens with the pornography is that a release of the neurochemicals in the brain that, that are released when they view the pornography, it bonds them emotionally to the online images. They become tied to those online images. So that bonding is an ungodly soul tie that needs to be broken. 
So those spirits of addiction to pornography can be commanded to leave. But the fact is, something takes place. It's the same with the video games. It's the same with the video games. I'll elaborate a little bit more later, but I'll tell you. Children who are addicted to the video games, it's neurochemicals that are released in their brain. And they are bonded to these games. Anything outside these games seems boring. Normal life is slower for them because the video games is... Psh, psh, psh. It's, 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 it's constant on the move, constant fighting, constant this, constant... And so what happens is life is, first of all, very fast. But not only that. That bonding with those games, and then they come into real life, it's too boring for them. There are some kids that they will tell their parents, let's go home, please. I, I, I need to go and play with my friend online. Sitting and relaxing with family is too boring for them. The fantasy world has become their reality, and the reality of life, they can't, they can't live. It's a huge problem. I want you to know that perpetual ecstasy to those who have lived that that way the fantasy life there's nothing so beautiful and so continually fresh and surprising and sweet as perpetual ecstasy at the end of the day i want you to know that what fantasy does is the ordinariness of life, there's a beauty in the ordinariness of life because there's God's presence, there's God's spirit. And while there are challenges in life, you will find that with fantasy, anything that is normally good in the reality of life is boring and flat and fictional evil becomes enticing and I want you to understand that at the end of the day the Garden of Eden the Garden of Eden in every way had real 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 delights we know that Adam and Eve there was no sin and there was unfiltered fullness and presence of God and his glory was there but when that serpent I spoke about showed up and presented them with a fantasy what happened was the evil became attractive and what was good that God had given them seemed not enough does this happen to you in life are you finding you always feel that life needs to have more and more now you could want more of God but quite frankly even when we have him there are still things that we seem to feel that we need so that life could become bearable. I want us to, to know that, and, and I mentioned this um, when we talked about uh, those who take or have taken drugs, okay? Um, first of all, when life becomes boring or life becomes challenging, we look for a way of escape. A lot of the TikTok videos have become escape for us. We have become the star in the videos. And for a few moments, we don't have the, the negativity of everyday life. You know, sometimes you know there are things you should not do or you ought not to do. I'm just using TikTok. I'm not here to talk about whether TikTok is good or not. I'm here to tell you, we become another person in the TikTok with nobody to tell us what to do and what, what not to do. It's a form of escape. It's appealing. And the thing about it is, we come back to reality, but every time we escape into fantasy, it becomes harder to live in reality. So someone who took drugs to escape reality could become saved, but if they are not delivered from fantasy, they will act out the fruit of fantasy in their everyday life. Drugs cause them to leave their families. Drugs cause them to be on the streets. They become saved, but the stronghold of fantasy 
causes them to look around at their life and see it as a wasteland and not a garden. We've got to come to terms with the fact that evil fantasies are perversions of the real good. And the good that we are designed to really enjoy, we cannot enjoy because we're always looking over the fence for something better. And, it, and it, sometimes we use our, our godlike imaginations fantasizing a world in which we fantasize about how God is or that we rule and we bring in our own selfish ambition, greed, anger, hatred, violence. That's why those video games are so appealing. In everyday life, we can't kill people, but we can kill people in those games because that's what the games are, some of them. I want us to know as well that it causes us, the more you live in fantasy, the more you're involved with those games, the more you don't understand that the way you are viewing life is not reality. What has happened is that our spiritual taste buds become addicted and we need to be constantly excited about things for us to really function. I'm simplifying it for you because ordinary life has become too boring and marriages have become too boring and just family life has become too boring and the fantasy life that, that, that we become addicted to is faster, quicker, full of adrenaline. The real life is much slower. And I think I've, I've, I've explained it and there are many more things I want to say to you because I want you to know that some of us have, okay, someone is saying here, I'll finish my sentence in a minute. I used to just go for a long run. There was a saying that our running club used, when life gets too hard to run. And you know something? I want you to know that running in itself is not a bad thing. But I could tell you my experience. Yes, y'all, I used to run long distance um, for hours, okay? Um... I would lose myself in that run. I told you all, if I, I said that in the other session, if I didn't run, don't come around me. Talk to me after I run. Because I was in a different world when I ran. And my body felt good from the running. And the chemicals that were released made me feel even better. And I could be anything I wanted to be while I was running, I, it was effortless. And because I felt it's exercise and it's good for me, the problem was when I had to stop running. If I had to face a difficult situation, I ran and then faced the situation. Like my sister said, the saying was, if, you, if life is hard, run. But then you become a slave to the running in order to live life. I'm using that as an example. We are to be only slaves to Jesus Christ, no one else. So once something is controlling you and you can't function unless you're doing it, you need to take note. And so I'm not going to give you my testimony. I can only tell you running is good. Running is, is wonderful. But God had his way of stopping what became fantasy in order to escape reality, but it didn't start off like that. These things don't start off that way, y'all, okay? You're not bad people. It's just that the difficulties of life, we find ways, instead of going to the Lord, going to his word, crying out to him, getting counseling or discipling to deal with situations, we find another way to deal with it until we have to come back to reality. So therefore, you could well understand, follow me carefully, I mashed up my body with the running because guess what? It wasn't once the band. I was three. And after three, I would run the chancellor. You understand what I'm saying? Like, who does that? Or run all the way down to Macarib and run all the way down to Shagramas and run back again. Yes, y'all. I wish I could find some pictures, but I wouldn't show them to you because you wouldn't recognize that person. That's how I ran. I was fit, okay? However... However, it began to encroach in my life because the more time you spend in fantasy, 
is the less time you have to spend in reality. And guess what? I love Jesus because I was saved since the age of 14. But clearly, there were some things that I still had to address in my life. And thank God for Jesus. He sets us free. Amen? So, I want you to know that as we go on, I'm going to address some questions. But um, you need to understand that we bring this, and I'm going to say fantasy is the drug of choice today. And we bring it in to our, listen to me carefully, there are some business ideas some people have entered into. You better make sure God told you to. Because if fantasy has led you into some of these business ideas, it will take a fantasy to make it work. Because when you hit reality with the business, that is more a fantasy of how you believe it could be, and not what the, 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 the financial condition and the needs of the people that you are trying to sell your product to. If they don't exist, that business is going bust. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When fantasy hits reality, something is going to fall and it will not be reality because reality is reality. Okay? So we can bring fantasy into business ideas. We can bring fantasy. We've, we've done it. We lose track of time with social media. Now, why am I talking about all these things? Because here we are trying to help people Worship in spirit and truth. What is that? Stand up on the pulpit and tell people. Let's worship in spirit and truth. And you haven't discipled them yet to walk in the reality of their life using the word of God. How are they going to, how are they going to worship in the true and living God in spirit and truth when their everyday life is not lived in spirit and truth? Are you hearing me? I'm saying to you as well, even your looks. Some of us have a fantasy about how we're supposed to look. And I will tell you, because I'm vulnerable, I'm not going to take it out of a textbook for you. Linked with my running was how I thought I needed to look. So if I had too much to eat, I ran it off. You could never keep up with that idea of how you could look. Or how you want to look. Of course you want to be healthy, y'all. But at the root of that is a hatred of self. And, 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 and the body that God gave you because he made you. Not for any other reason. And when God set me free of that addiction, I could look in the mirror and what I saw was good. Not in a prideful way. But God made me. So it don't matter. Who says what about me? I'm not telling you to go around looking like a frump. And then you're looking in the mirror and balling it good. You well know, go and wash your face, fix your hair and everything, right? But I'm saying to you, I could not look in the mirror before and like what I saw. But when God sets you free, you will look and you will say, you made me, this is good. So it's linked with us understanding when we want to disciple people, these are some of the things that's blocking them from receiving the love of God because they cannot even look in the mirror and love what they see. Because there's a fantasy out there of how we should look. You know, little girls, and I'm not going to go into it with the Barbie dolls and the this and the that, I'm not saying anything wrong with the Barbie doll. But when you have this way that you're supposed to look, you could never live up to that. And you may have had parents. I share that with you. My father made a comment one day about the way I looked. And that stayed with me. I was overnight anorexic. Overnight, I stopped eating. Because his comment to me about my looks. Now, what has this got to do with fantasy? Because what I felt I should have looked like was fantasy. My build, it was not how God called me to be. So for me to be, look like that... I had to become a slave to starving myself and running or eating too much and throwing up and running. Are you all here? And some of you feel you're looking at this woman that God has called to with her husband to lead a church. Well, she was always perfect. He saved me at 14. I was not perfect. There has been a lot of ups and downs and he's still not finished with me. So if he can work in me, he can work in you. No, he doesn't love me more than you. I wish I had what you have now. Somebody to sit down and tell me about these things. I have no one. You 
God is pouring into you. Don't swallow the lie and live in fantasy and deprive yourself of the beauty of reality with the struggles that come with reality, with the, with the challenges that come with reality, with the knocks that come with reality, with the hurts that come with reality. I face hurt all the time. It's part of the walk when you serve Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to escape into fantasy in a world where everybody loves me and everybody loves what I say. Not at all. You will come to understand when you face reality in the identity that Christ has died and shed his blood to give you. Oh, yes, you will face challenges, but you will recognize you are in this world, but you're not of this world. And you will leap over walls. You will climb over those mountains that they said you couldn't climb over. But you cannot do that in the world of fantasy. Let me hear what some people are saying here. Okay. I stopped recently to not watch CNN because I caught myself being caught up in the lives of others. It was, I was in their world emotionally. Yes, we do that on Facebook too. We do that on, on nearly everything. You're caught up in the, in the whole lives of others. And, and, and things are happening and you are totally depressed by whatever is happening in the world till you get over it for the next thing that happens. Because every little thing about everything that happens, you have to know everything, and that becomes your world. But that's not, that's not God's will. I'm not saying you're not to know news, but not to the point where you become a slave to it and it affects your life. You're depressed for six weeks after the tragic shooting that took place, and you can't function because of what we know. This is tragic, but, but listen, it's tragic. But these things, we cannot live in that world of every bad thing that happens because we will never be able to stand in the world that we are in and take the gospel and speak it. You will feel like you can't read the Bible until you get over this terrible evil that took place. I used to, okay, someone said, all right, it causes depression because they would wish the fantasy was real life. Yes, and you want to escape some of the bad news that's going on because some people are not coping well with what happened with COVID. I understand in certain countries because I do minister to people outside of Trinidad and Tobago. There are small towns and places like Canada and so people who have not seen each other for a long time when they were allowed to see each other. It was so awkward. It was so depressing. They didn't know. And remember in those countries, sometimes depending on the time of the year, it will get dark very early so sometimes four o'clock in the afternoon it's pitch black people become depressed and they are living all this covid thing has become their life do you know covid can be a fantasy you say but how is that because it's in our reality it has consumed us to the point we know nothing else but what is happening with covid we've forgotten what the word has said we've forgotten that we are here now and we are called to love one another. We are called to connect with one another. The fantasy of being locked away, and it is a fantasy, because those people who have a tendency to like to withdraw, COVID has fitted them perfectly to the point where they are still living. That fantasy of, I don't have to see people all the time. I don't need to be around people, because there are people who are like that, regardless of what COVID dictated. And what has happened is, they cannot adjust to the reality of going back out to live with other people and connect with other people. I'm saying this to you because you need to understand what has, what has happened to some of us. I'd use the weightless feeling of swimming in the sea as a form of escape. Yes, I know about the weightless feeling of running. Now, I wasn't this size that I am now earlier. So I know some all are cracking up now wondering what I'm talking about. There's a weightlessness when you run long distance and there's a weightlessness in the swimming as the brothers sharing, right? And nothing is wrong with the swimming and the running, but you could swim more than you actually live in the house with your family because you want to go back to that feeling and you want to go back to that form of escape. I find myself feeling discontented in my life and complaining about life being monotonous experience extreme highs when I escape but when I come back to reality terrible anxiety and depression desperate to escape some other way and I want to say to this person that this is 
um, representative of many people, maybe not all, because we need some help to take, remember what Jesus said, Father, don't take them out of this world. Leave them in this world, but protect them from the evil one. The evil one brings the anxiety and the depression and all these things. We need help to deal with the depression, to deal with the anxiety using the word of God and deliverance and, and prayer so that we can stand in this world and walk through this world because Jesus said, Father, do not take them out of this world. So all these things that we experience and we want to escape, this is how I've had to deal with if there were some things in my life. It may not be the same as you. I am not running from it. I'm going to face it. I'm not going to run for three hours to escape it anymore. I'm going to face it. And God will make and has made a way for us. But I will tell you, it's going to require you to understand, as some have said to me, when they come to tarrying and to spend the time that God has given them in his presence, some of the things that's affecting them, they're forced to cry out to him. We have faced a lot of challenges and desire to escape these things, but not recognized the time that needs to be taken, getting the help and spending the time connecting with God is what is going to take us out of wanting to escape this life. Because if God has said, stay here, God has said that I've shed my blood for you. He has said, I have given my life for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. There's something we are missing if we still feel we need to escape. We've got to get help for the things that cause us to want to escape this world. And don't use that default mechanism of escapism and those things that cause us to want to escape. We've got to get to the point where we've got to stop running, which is what I did. We've got to stop. We've got to face those things that want us to run away from the life that God has placed us in on our way home to be with him. There are wholesome, exciting relationships that God has placed in our life for us that we need. And the fantasy world that is superficial and shallow and ultimately unsatisfying is a trap. It steals our God-given potential. I also want you to know that if you've grown up in a home where there's been a lot of problems, that's what causes us when we actually now are young adults and adults. Those problems are continuing and we, and we want to escape. We need to get help for the effects of what has happened to us in our life. And we can get help. Those of you who may not belong to Life and Life Ministry, then you need to message. Maybe there are people I could refer you to or maybe there may be time for you to be part of a group session. But I am saying to you through Christ, through the word, through prayer, through counseling, through discipling, you can get help. God did not cause the disciples to leave with him. They wanted to. When he was leaving, when Jesus was leaving, the good feeling they had, they said, we're going to put three tents up and we're going to stay here. And he said, go and wait for the comforter. You know what that says? It says that God is not going to call us to live on the mountaintop. He's going to send us down into the valley where there are challenges. And why? Because he sent the comforter to be with us. Through the Holy Spirit, we can endure. We just have not learned how to. So your feeling to escape continues or wanting to escape. I want us to also know that it's the same with masturbation. It's the same with pornography. It's an escape. And I wouldn't go into all the reasons why. But I'm letting you know that the more people masturbate and want to get married, is the more they will masturbate when they marry to their wife or husband. It will never be good enough. Okay, take that, leave it right there. We're not going into that right now. I want you to know that your, your, your idea of marriage, your idea of relationships, the idea of lots of things, be careful that you have not built ideas 
based on fantasy and not reality. Someone is saying to me here that music, I couldn't do without music on any given day. I was angry, joyful, sad, I needed music. And it's quite possible that you grew up in a home where music was played all the time, all the time, all the time. And so you needed to have that music in order to function. We have to be careful. Music can transport us, okay, into different realms. So maybe where you were transported to was reality for you, but it was really fantasy. So when you had to live reality, you needed to have, you need to have that music played so that you can function. These are the things that happen to many of us, and sometimes the music is not the best. Um, it, it may not be godly music. Yes, that's very relatable, but one thing that helps me is being extremely appreciative and happy of the smallest things. Yes, and that's good advice, but sometimes there's deeper issues that need to be dealt with because we, we're choosing to be grateful, but we don't feel the gratefulness. Yes, I was also addicted to music. Um, combining it with exercise, it was it takes you into a different realm. Listen to me, y'all. What you don't know, I'll tell you now. Many, 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 many years ago. Remember, I'm 62. I said there's plenty many's, okay? Years ago. I was also a trained aerobics instructor. So I know the combination of the exercise and the music. It, if you want to make somebody do a hundred push-ups, okay? Or you want, they had those competitions that went on for like two hours, three hours. And I never, ever chose to lose. So I would continue till the end. The music took you into that realm. You understand what I'm saying? And so you would just continue. And this is what music does to us. Now you have to understand something. You could be a Christian and think that these things are normal, you know. Till God begins to show you, I'm taking you deeper. There are some things that you thought were okay. Because some things are not overtly bad. There are aerobics instructors right now on the Zoom platform. There's nothing wrong with teaching people exercise. Depends on the music you're using. You need to question some of the music. There's nothing wrong. It's when these things control your life. But sometimes, and this is my point. This is why we're doing this series. You may think something doesn't control your life. Until you begin to have to not have it in your life. And you're finding yourself not able to function. Okay? Are you operating in reality? Or are you tasting fantasy in order to function in reality? That's my point to you. Because none of these things we've talked about are terrible. But when God wants to take you deeper, for you to worship Him in spirit and truth, there's deliverance that must come from some habits that actually deep and hidden things that are, that are hindering your spiritual growth. So what's the difference between fantasy and trying to cope? If there's any difference, we will come to that. It will not be today because there are ways of coping and living life that are not fantasy, it's reality. Okay, right now we are dealing with, we are trying to identify, are we people that understand the effects of fantasy? And are we people that actually are operating in fantasy part of the time? That's where we are right now. So that's a good question to come back to. So in essence, fantasy deprives you of actually stepping into your true God-given destiny and purpose because you are constantly withdrawing from the reality. He has called you to overcome challenges for the very hard reality that he's called you to live. I'm adding a few words here because sometimes... The writing, I need to put the sentences together quickly, right? Hard reality is the only way one will be shaped into the very person that we were created to be. Yes, let me tell you something that I wrote that I want to read to you before I go on. Okay, so I wrote this as I reflected on the thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Reality is powerful, it's honest, it's raw. It's not easy, but it's liberating. Without reality, we will stay in cycles of illusion that will keep us from making changes in our life. Changes that will bring us into a deeper connection with ourselves and others. 
If you want to identify the source of your thoughts, because it is thoughts that we believe that lead us into either staying in reality or going into fantasy. When you identify the source of your thoughts, what happens is you can identify truth or lie. So for example, if you've had a history of addiction or pornography, escape from reality is easy for you because that's how you've learned. You've learned how to escape reality. But if you want to stop escaping reality because you no longer want to live in fantasy, you have to begin to identify the source of your thoughts because it is first when you believe a thought it creates a certain feeling and you act on it and this is the this is this is where the shift occurs so for example there are those people that will call a particular thought that's a lie truth so i'll give you an example if someone is addicted to alcohol and they say it is not that big of a deal if I just have one drink. If that's coming from the lips of someone who cannot stop after one drink, and I may have used this before, but I'm bringing it back. That's the fantasy self-talking. That's the addictive self-talking. A lot of us have made a transition from reality to fantasy. It goes back and forth all day long. All day long, we live in two worlds. If you want to stop going into fantasy, you have to start pinning down some of those thoughts that come to you. It could be a split second and you're acting on it. And the next thing you know, you literally have escaped the difficult situation that you were just facing a few minutes ago. Is somebody, are you all following what I'm saying? I, I want you to know that the the fantasy self, the addictive self, whatever it might be, can speak to you. You better start to identify, is that fantasy talking or is that reality talking? But it can be a little difficult in the beginning. And that is the reason why I want you to know, if you are in a relationship with someone, I'm not speaking here boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about pastor, and disciple or disciple and disciple various relationships if you are not accustomed or do not like to be challenged in the way you do things because you don't like the uncomfortable feeling chances are you will run from every relationship where God has put somebody in your life to help you because the discomfort of a relationship that can challenge you to do what is right in God's eyes is too much discomfort for you. You don't like drama. You don't, so let me like Nita, let's like Nita marriage, okay? You know there's some men or some women in a marriage, as soon as one spouse starts to talk about, well, I find that we need to do this a little differently, this thing that happened last week, oh gosh, don't stress me out now. Don't, I, can't, I can't deal with that right now. I can't deal with that. And that person shuts down. They escape. That's fantasy. It's not reality. They don't want to deal with the situation. This is what I'm speaking of. So there is no improvement in the relationship. One escapes and the other one has to wait until the escapee comes back out from their little cave to live life again. Somebody understanding what I'm saying here today, you could wave to me and tell me if you understand what I'm saying to you today. Because this is why relation, I'm not seeing nobody wave, and that's all right, you understand. All in the room waving here with me, right? Okay. I want you to know this is why some friendships could fall apart. Simply because that friend, not tickling your ears. That pastor, not tickling your ears. They love you, but they are going to tell you what is what needs what, what, what needs attention. 
because you ask. If you give somebody permission is one thing. Most people don't. There are some people that have said, I give you permission to tell me, so, so, so. The majority don't and don't want to hear it, especially if it's preached from the pulpit and it's not you they're talking to, but it fell into your garden. It causes offense because we don't want discomfort. I want you to know because time has gone, I don't know where it has gone, that by being able to identify the source of these thoughts, by being able to identify what is going on in our life in terms of how we are choosing to face this life, what are the tools that we are using, which we are not going today to, to talk about. Somebody mentioned how do we cope. We need to take stock of these things because there are Christians today just because of the COVID, they are fearful, they are anxious, they are questioning life, they have a crisis of faith, they don't know what is going on. It tells me that their understanding of the gospel was partly fantasy. Because if it was reality and they knew the truth, the truth would set them free and they would be strong enough to stand in the face of adversity. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? When you live in reality and you reject fantasy, you can face adversity through the power of the Holy Spirit and His Word. And so, I want to go a little deeper next time we come together as to how we could call fantasy a drug of choice today and ways that we have allowed fantasy to be a drug of choice because that is the reason why we have a tendency to want to go onto the broad road because the narrow road of reality is too hard. But God has given us a way forward in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you to also understand that we hide, we hide through fantasy. We love to hide. Adam was hiding. God said, where are you, Adam? Oh, I was hiding because I was afraid. We love to hide. And this is the reason why fantasy has become something more comfortable for us, it allows us to hide. And that goes for the masks that we wear to church. When people ask us how we are, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm too blessed to be stressed. And all the nonsense phrases that we've learned to say. And the reason why we encourage people to stay in fellowship after service, and we are not the only people, is because in the service, or oh, you're caught up in ecstasy with worship with Jesus. Come down now and talk to your friend who need to talk to somebody, connect. This is our reality. We are human beings. We are spirit beings in a human body, but we need to talk about life. Take a few moments after service and connect with someone because that helps them to understand that as they are facing reality, so are you. Can we talk about it? Can we have a conversation? So just a couple comments before we close. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Reverend. No, I was thinking about those children in the schools now that are fighting so much, and it is so prevalent. Like it's almost like you know they go on a little crazy. And um, I was wondering, I was listening to what you were saying, and I was wondering, like, oh, these children playing with these games and so on. If this is what causing them now to be yeah. in the school. But even in our homework academy, we don't normally have fights, and even <laughs> we are seeing fights happening. So, and I was listening to a teacher over talking with another one last week, and she was saying it, it's so bad, and so much a fight in the school taking place now. They just don't understand why the children are fighting so much because you're now coming out from you know home, and you know only now start to play and interact. Why you are fighting so much? Well. It's, they need to understand that they have their reality, right, has been the games that are fighting and killing each other for what, two years? That has been their reality. The fantasy has been their reality. If that is inside of you for two years every day, hours they spent on the games. So when you come back out, that's your reality. 
And then you're telling me I gotta sit quiet. First of all, it's boring because they are accustomed living in that world. I had a young man, I sat with him for this is years ago and walked him through coming out of thinking that the game was his reality to live life in a reality. He was hugely overweight. And so it was easier to live life in the fantasy. So what the teachers need to understand is that they are, they, these are kids, that's their reality. So now you bring them into an environment and tell them to be quiet, to social distance, to, 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 to talk civilly and they are custom going, po, 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 po. And they are custom, when they feel something, they react it. Try stopping them in the game when they are in the middle of killing somebody in the game. They want to kill you. Parents who try to stop them from the games, to say, go to the bathroom, you've been on this game all day. They don't want to stop. So they bring that into the school and they bring their reality into what seems more like fantasy to them. And furthermore, it's boring, it's slow. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they can't adjust it. They have to deal with the root of the issue. You have brought them from two years of being online with games. So a lot more has to go into just, what happened to these children, they now come out here, yeah, they now come out and they are bringing their reality into their environment. And that's what's going on. And it's demons and it's all these things that are involved. Um, because of time, I'm just quickly looking. I think it's when we spend an unhealthy amount of time in the coping mechanism and it turns into a distorted reality. Yes, and I will talk more about that because you need to know, right, the coping mechanism, but the one that needs to be the truthful, the true one, the, 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 not coping as in fantasy, but you need to become acquainted with how God calls us to deal with challenges and spend more time in that area. But right now we are spending more time in the fantasy, the coping mechanism that's counterfeit. Agreed when I used to weight train the faster the music, the heavier I could have lifted. You know how I mash up my body running miles that I don't even know how I run now because my body was not designed for that. The more the music, the headphones. Listen, I'm giving all you a quick joke. I know I'm closing up now. A quick, quick joke. I had at the time a trainer who followed me because, of course, I'm on my own. He fell asleep at the wheel. True story, y'all. Okay? I am running, and I am running to time because I'm training for a marathon, okay? Well, you're looking at me slighter. Eh? I do not run again, but I'm telling you I understand. He was driving, following me. He fell asleep. He knocked me down, right? You're, you're listening? He was going slow. I, he, I fell into a ditch, and because of the fact that I felt I could not stop running because it would interrupt with my time, I jumped back up and kept going and I allowed him to check out if I had anything broken when we finished the, 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 the length of the, the, the distance that I was supposed to run. Do you understand the craziness that fantasy does? Do you hear what I'm saying? In my mind, I needed to finish this. I started it, finish it, right? And it didn't matter if I had a broken toe. I wasn't stopping. He was horrified. So my point is this. Bring it back. Bring it back, okay? First of all, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, sets us free of these things. But at the end of the day, that's what happens with those children with those games, eh? You try to stop them for something good like eating and going to the bathroom. Not until they finish the part where they're supposed to kill about 10 people to win the game. And then they will act like a human being after that. You all understand what I'm saying? Now, if I was to hear this thing, I would say that's not possible. Look at me. Thank God you've seen a child of God, right? I was saved at that time, but there were things I did not know that I was addicted to. I did, what, how is that an addiction? That's a wonderful thing to do, to go and run. There are other things in our lives that we are a slave to. Begin to ask God to show you. And if it's not you, somebody that God is calling you to help. But can we please start with ourselves? And so I want you to know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, somebody wants the description of reality and fantasy. Somebody remind me about that. I'm not sure what the question means because we are doing definitions as we go along. But maybe that person could message me. All right, last question. 
And sometimes, every time something comes up, they react in that way. Oh gosh, I can't talk about that right now. And they get upset or flustered because they say they have a lot on their plate. Truth is, they are always stressed, so you realize that they never return to talk about anything. They keep putting you off or avoid you on the whole. Yes, they would, because you are taking away their fantasy of a life without challenges. I don't want no drama. I don't want no stress. I just want peace. Don't bring anything into my life that is going to take away my peace. They cannot deal with relationships. They live in fantasy land and that is not how God calls us to live. I want you to understand, God has said we are in this world, we are not of this world. He has given us everything in his word for life and godliness. As he is changing us and, and forming and fashioning us in terms of, of sanctifying us, he sanctified me, thank you Jesus. Okay, you might see an old woman at 62 still running along the highway if that wasn't the case. But... But God has a different plan. I want you to know, okay, there's hope for all of us, right? And he wants you. Here's the word. I'm not taking anybody's line. He wants you to live your most, your best life now based on truth. Your best life now based on truth, not on fantasy. Are you hearing me? He calls us to worship him in spirit and truth. So saints, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to this message. I want to encourage you to begin to ask God to show you the deep and hidden things that's keeping you back from accepting his word and applying it. And that's what calls us to live our best life now in spirit and in truth. And please send us your comments on whether this is useful because we want to encourage other people who will not use your name. We just want to say some comments about the session so that others will know whether it's worth their while because there are many that don't think it's worth their while right now. Okay, God bless you all. I'm going to close in prayer. And if there are any questions you wanted to ask, message me, add me on WhatsApp, 355-5090. Add me on WhatsApp, send in your question, I will respond back to you. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for this group. I thank you for all who are, Father, here today, all who are struggling. Father, it may be pornography, it may be, Father, all kinds of forms of fantasy. I pray that your Holy Spirit, Father, begin to flow through them. I pray that you begin to stir them up to what is the reality of your word and the life that you've placed them to live. Father, that they may not default into escapism and fantasy. Father, I pray that you will help us to be able to help others, to understand what's going on with some of the school children, to understand what's going on in our families. And in the mighty name of Jesus, may we live this life in spirit and truth. May we know the truth about fantasy so that we can live in reality where we know the truth and the truth will set us free. Amen. Mm -hmm.